Good morning, everybody. How are you? I hope you're all okay. We are live for the drawing workshop today, which is at the aquarium. So get comfortable. Bring all your pens and your pencils. Um, might be a good opportunity whilst we're waiting to do a bit of pencil sharpening. I don't need to pencil my sharpener because I've already got mine. Oh. Hi, Al. Hi, Helen. Lovely to see you. We're here. We're just sharpening our pencils. Uh, we have Fern back with us today, this week, because she hasn't done it for a couple of weeks. Do you want to say hello? Hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and we've got Charlotte here again, as usual, too. And Charlotte's just sharpening some pencils as well. So, drop a uh, comment, say hi if you want to. It's lovely to see you all here again. I think that's Julie on as well. Hey, Katty. I'm getting to recognise everybody from their little pictures as well. So, let's do a few waves to everybody as well. Hello, Elise. Hi, Yoel. Let me. Oh, hi, Elise. Elise is let a friend of Kat's. Hi, oh, lovely to have you here. Kate's here. Yeah, hello, everybody. Let me say. Hi, Helen. Let me say oh. something to it to them. Hannah's here. Oh, it's so nice to see you all. Oh, look who's here. Who's that? Paul Tadkins. Paul Tadkins here. Daddy. Daddy's here. Daddy, Daddy. <laughs> Daddy, are you going to join in? Ah, are you going to join in? Let's send us some photo evidence, please. That will be good. We liked your seahorse last week. That was really good. Right, I thought I'd just talk whilst we're waiting for people to come on. I just thought I'd talk about pencils, actually. So you don't need any special pencils. Um, any pencil will do, really. But most, most of the time, to hand at home will be the school-style pencils, mm -hmm. which are like HB pencils. Um, but... You might find if you've got a pack of pencils that you start to get into the B numbers. This is a H. So that's, is that a H? So a H. So that's, a, that's like this a, is a hubba. harder one. A H is a harder pencil. and a, a harder pencil will always give you a finer line. Um, that Actually, if you press quite hard, they're quite hard to rub out. But they're really good for I've doing really light hubba. lines. I've got a hubba. Fern's got a hubba. A HB pencil is what you tend to draw with normally but if you want to start getting some depth and texture into your work then you can move into the B's um, the softer pencils and I just find that they're really really good um, for putting in texture shading and things like that so and you can see they're very small they're, well, they're very small what well, the writing is very small no, they're very small comparing to that one are they do you think that's just been used a bit more? So you can see I favour a 2B pencil because it's much more, it's been sharpened a lot more and used a lot more. I if you try. drop your pencils, it can break the lead inside them yeah. and they sharpen less easily. Yeah, so do be careful with your pencils because if you drop them, like Charlotte said, they can, it can break the uh, and lead I think inside. It and them, so they're breaking Yeah, I think you're right, Charlotte. Um, so I tend to use between a B and a 2B, really, and. Um, Depending, like last week when we did the koala, it's quite nice to use a 3B to get more of the, the furry texture. So I just thought I'd talk through that because I realised I hadn't really mentioned the different sorts of pencils that I use. Today I'll be using the 2B pencil, I think. Today, yeah. But I might ch might swap and change around. I've lost, I've lost it. I've lost it now. Never mind. <laughs> okay, so should we get started? What we normally do, if you're new to the group, we start with a check-in. <laughs> Today I might be using a freebie as well as um, a HB. Oh, brilliant. Well, we can chop and change, can't we? And we can share them around. But obviously, if you haven't got any of those and you've only got a HB pencil, like the ones you get at school, then that's absolutely fine. And if you've only well. got one of these pencils, it's okay, because those pencils that I'm most likely to use out of this, this mm -hmm. pencil at school, I like to use this pencil. Yeah, brilliant. Let's get started. <laughs> So, what we're going to do with, with our check-in, what we like to do is oh, just wait, my chair is not get comfortable wobbly. Get comfortable on your chair, make sure your chair's not wobbly, and then just sit on your sitting bones, make sure your back's nice and straight, and just let all of that tension from your head, from your neck, and from your shoulders just drop down into the base of your spine, into your the bottom of your tummy, and Hello. just let all of that... Um, let all of that <laughs> tension and that stress just drop down into the lower part of your body. So you might feel a bit of a change in where the heaviness is in your body. And if you're feeling the heaviness in your stomach and your bottom, then that's really good. That means that you've started to relax those shoulders and get a lot more relaxed. Fern's just given you a little glimpse, actually, something that I've done to her, for her today. So if you've got a younger child, 
um, I'm going to be putting these resource sheets together where I will um, put what we're drawing out in order and they're going to be available as a free download. Um, I'll give you a little sneaky glimpse of what we're drawing today. And I found that that will just help Fern because she will find it a little bit harder to follow on as fast as, as I go because obviously we've only got like an hour for this. I know which um, one I can do. And that if you're, a bit, if you're an older child, it's easier to keep up with what I'm doing. Okay. Yes, Fern? I know which one I can do easy. Yeah. So Fern's got now got some options of what she can choose, pick and choose easily. Um, so they will be available as soon as I can get those um, onto PDF for you to download each week. Um, and I will make a bank as well of the ones that we've done previously. So you can follow along if you've not done the workshops already. Um, you might notice at the start of this uh, live, I've got a little link to my Kofi or coffee account. Um, that's completely... Um, you don't feel obliged, but I've set it up so that you can make the, a donation of a small price of like a, a cup of coffee if you're liking and enjoying these sessions. Absolutely don't feel that you have to. They're still free and will always be free for the um, for as long as we're in lockdown. But if you'd like to and you've enjoyed the sessions, then you can. Thanks, then. Then you can make a donation if you would like to. Um, Okie dokie. So we've done our little um, check-in where we're feeling how we feel in the body. Um, and I thought what I would do today is show you first, because we like to have a little quote. I'll just show you the quote I like that we've got today. And I thought this was a really lovely quote. So it says, when I'm drawing a picture, I feel quiet inside. So maybe just have a few minutes just to think about that, a few seconds. What, what my, to think about how you feel when you're drawing. What my plastic is to feel when your first drawing is the... Um, Draw happily and then draw what you feel inside. Draw happily and draw what you feel inside is what Fern says. Hi Jenny, hi Debbie. So Fern's saying draw happily and draw what you feel inside. So I would love to hear how you feel when you draw. Um, you will still be there, yeah, don't worry. Oh, lots of love hearts. I'm hoping that means that you all feel great when you're drawing. And for mums and dads and carers out there, um, how do you feel? Have you started to draw again as a result of maybe these classes or just a result of being in lockdown? Why has um, someone put I think we are all um, being sustained a lot by our creativity, you know, and it just shows that when we take a lot of other things away, the things that really matter and that remain are things that we have inside us already. We don't need to go out and buy. Um, they are resources that we have that we can draw on. And drawings helped me get through a lot of things in my life, and I really believe that art can heal. Um, so that that was just my little perspective. When I'm drawing a picture, I feel quiet inside, and I certainly do. I certainly feel like it's almost like a form of meditation when I'm drawing. Mummy, yeah. I have someone put on a laughing emoji and an angry mat and emoji. <laughs> I don't know. But that's okay, isn't it? Sometimes your finger can slip as well. Hi, Angie. Hi, Lucy. Oh, lovely. Right. Oh, you've turned that's the page amazing. back over. So today you can see on here we've got a jellyfish that we're going to draw. Because we've got some fish. Definitely... We're going to have a little go of the um, seahorses again, only because I really like drawing them and some people might have missed that last week. We've got a whale here that's so big that he's encompassing the whole of the picture. Oh, wait, so you can play around with your drawings. Way. It's the same whale. I thought yeah. it was two different Could ways. be two different ones if you if you wanted it, but I think it's one just wrapping around Don't all of the ocean. The um, talking about meditation, what I want you to do now is just close your eyes. We'll have a little visualisation. So you're going to close your eyes, girls. Close your eyes, take a big deep breath in through your nose. Ow. And out through your mouth. And I want you to visualise, like we did last week, that you were at the seaside and the waves were coming in as you breathed in and going out as you breathed out. Today I want you to imagine that you are wading into that ocean and it's really bright and blue and crystal clear. I want you to see, imagine that you're wading in and you're carrying on, you're walking in until it gets deeper and deeper and the waves are lapping at your knees. Then they're lapping at your waist. And you're going so deep and so far that you're actually going to swim in the ocean. So I want you to imagine that you're diving in. And you can just see all the beautiful blue ocean. The sun is shining down into the sea. This is what you did for me and Fraser's meditation for bedtime when yeah. I couldn't go to sleep. Yeah, it always works. Isn't it? That's the tea. 
Lots and I want well. you to imagine that as you go down into the water, you can see loads of tiny fish, tiny sea life. And you can see coral, and you can see rocks and bubbles, and you can see <laughs> tiny fish, and you can see shells and crabs, and all those amazing things that you might have seen when you were on holiday, and you might have seen if you've been at the aquarium as well. And that's where we're going to be today. We're going to be in the blue, deep, calm water as we go to the aquarium or under the sea, if you prefer. And we're going to draw some sea creatures. So as usual, we're going to start with our, our warm up. <laughs> so for our warm up today, we're going to start with some tiny circles. I really like to start with circles because, circles. as I always say, it underpins what we do when we're drawing. Lots of shapes and lots of characters come from tiny circles. But today, these tiny, 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 tiny circles can be bubbles in your sea and or tiny, in your aquarium. And tiny, tiny circles, it reminds me of um, SpongeBob SquarePants or yeah. whatever he's called. So, Bob's, on his, Bob's on his body. Yeah. You might have a favourite programme like, what's it called? Spongebob Squarepants, and that's all set under the Mr. sea. Mr. You might have a favourite storybook. I really like, that's a sea theme, I really like Tiddler. Has anyone read Tiddler? Yeah. Ooh, Charlotte's setting the scene for us today at the aquarium. Thank you very much, Charlotte. I like that. And very this nice. is um, Bubbles. So if you're struggling to visualise, because it's not always easy to visualise when you do a meditation, then you can Google or look aquarium. up a photo of an aquarium or under the sea scene and that if, might give you some inspiration if you'd like Are we drawing bubbles, doing right? bubbles yeah we're just doing some bubbles if you like cartoons just gonna have a bit of a slurp of tea can they range in size hmm. yeah your bubbles can range in size because if, they do really don't they if, um, if you ever look they can be tiny like, and they can be big if you like mr bean then um then um i do it well but you put a yes at <laughs> Fern wants to know if you like Mr Bean. Fern loves watching the Mr Bean cartoon. Um, and you could, if you wanted to, you could fill your whole paper with bubbles because um, just, just for a doodle exercise if you wanted to. Now you could just do it's a really nice way of making a pattern as well. So you could colour in, you could colour in each bubble or you could colour in the background if you wanted to make a big pattern. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, and these are all shapes that we're going to use. Don't worry if you feel like you're behind fern, it's fine. So if you've got younger ones um, and they're happy doing, you know, just the bubbles, then that's fine. Yeah, that's okay, Char. If you need to go for a drink at any point or have a break, don't worry, you can always come back and watch the replay. Charlotte's just gone to get a quick drink. Um, what we're doing now is we're going to use some sh some of the shapes we're going to use today. Because I like to just warm up with some shapes that we will be using. I'm just going to go and get my drink. Your drink's on the windowsill, isn't it? We have a strict rule of no drinks on the table. They have to go on the windowsill just for obvious reasons. <laughs> so these are just squiggles. This looks a bit like a party now, doesn't it? So just get loose. This is a really good way of loosening up when you're drawing as well because making a mark on a paper can be really scary, can be really daunting. If you don't want to kind of ruin, which you wouldn't ever be doing, but people do worry about ruining a white paper or worried just about... Just taking that first step and making the mark and making that commitment on the paper, that can be really scary. Lovely. Do you want to show everybody? So these are ferns bubbles. Well done. Are you going to do some squiggly lines now? Yeah. Okay, the next shape we're doing, which is getting a little bit more complicated, is this. And you might be able to see what it turns into. So it's like two lines, one, one going this way, like a smile and then a downward smile attached to it. Oh, this is like a fish symbol for mm. like God. It is a fish, it is a religious symbol it's as like, well, isn't it? A fish. And it's like an F but just but just longer like Oh, a that's great. Long bit. So that's a really good way of describing it. Um like Fern said, it's like an air. But you're just missing out the curly bit. So if your child can draw, um can write um some letters and can write a letter A, e, then that's a really good way of describing it. Thank you very much, Fern. Ow. So, so we can see that these are just tiny fish, and if you wanted to do a seascape, um, you could have tiny fish in the background, and that's a really good way of doing it. But this is also the really good foundation of doing the bigger fish later on, which we will be doing. 
There's a picture okay. in the bathroom that has a picture of aquarium stuff like yeah. golden fish. It does have a uh, goldfish on it, doesn't it? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw some um, coral. So that's like like almost like a wiggly hand, oh, yeah, but with that. more fingers on it than normal. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fingers instead of five. Or you can do it like this. Okay. Or, or you can do it like this. Oh, Kate says she's so excited. Oh, I'm glad you are, Kate. Yay! There is different types so you of could, coral. There's loads of different types of coral, so you could make it more bumpy in different parts. And you can do coral like this. Can I show them? Of course you can, yeah. You could have your little fish swimming in and out of the coral, couldn't you? Yeah. You should, if you Lovely. ever go like scuba diving don't touch the coral because it kills it and then, then the fishies can't eat it uh, and the last thing we're going to draw which we will be using today or at some point because i'm going to set a little challenge hey, where are we again there's yeah. some curly shapes like this just some curly twirls what are you showing us Shar? coral reef oh that's beautiful isn't it and I read today that in Australia at the moment, obviously because they are in lockdown and people can't go scuba diving, that instead of, instead of going scuba diving tours, they are actually planting coral, coral reefs as well. So I just think that's wonderful, isn't it? It really ties into what we're doing today. So with the swirls here, you can actually make them. If you close it off, you can make it into those tiny little seashells or sea snails that you see at the seaside. And if you're feeling a bit fancy, you can sort of do a bit of a taller. I did it when I think I wouldn't be able to do it. Oh, good. So Fern's done it when she didn't think she'd be able to What's do that? it. What's that? That's see like, you know when you get a little sea snail? Yeah. That's like a longer shell. Oh, yeah. So we've got some sea snails going on as well. Oh, don't worry, Jilly. Jilly says she's missed the start. You haven't missed anything, Jilly. We're just doing a little warm-up. So you can always... Um, Stop it and you know watch the replay later Wait, anyway. Do so don't worry, we've not missed a thing. Could you do a sketch of that? A sketch of that for you. Okay. Yeah, it's on there for you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just a light sketch. Oh, you're going to go over it. Yeah. Um, and also, if you do have younger ones, you can always sketch it out for them really lightly for them to draw over. Yeah. I find that really helps with fern. Um, okay, so that's our warm up <laughs> done for today. I'm going to move on now to the first creature that we're going to draw. I think the snail's fine. The first creature that we're going to draw today is a beautiful jellyfish. There's lots of ways to draw a jellyfish, but I'm going to There's keep it really simple. Two ways okay. like this. Two ways. Two ways. We're going to look at those two. We're going to look at two ways of drawing it, aren't we? You can do whichever one you want. Yeah. And what I would um, sort of advise people is that have a go drawing in my style, and then have a practice with what makes you happy when you draw so everyone has their own style and it might be that you want to develop your own okay. style and what i've been finding is that it's absolutely amazing what i love seeing is is your interpretations of what i've drawn and how it differs um from what i've drawn and that you've used it as a springboard to My like beautiful paintbrush as you use it as a springboard to develop your own <laughs> um, ideas and style so it's really good keep those pictures coming you can always message them to me on facebook so what we're going to do today, we're going to draw, we're going to start by drawing um, the sea, um, and it's a seahorse, not a seahorse, it's a jellyfish. So we're going to take, it's almost like an umbrella shape. Mummy, is, is this a back, back or grey? It's a grey, grey pencil. It's close enough to black. Yeah, that's fine. You can use a black pencil crayon if you need to. So right. we've taken, it's like a hump. If you imagine it's a bit like a hill, and then we're going to use a wiggly oh, line. Okay. It could be like a camel's hump, we're going to use a wiggly line just to jo join it together. It could be like a little Halloween ghost as well if you wanted to, if you were doing some Halloween themed drawings. I really love these because they're really effective in, but so simple. And if you were to draw loads together and group loads together, you'd have to suddenly have a shoal of uh, jellyfish and you could do all sorts of different sizes. And then we're going to take the wiggly line we did in our draw, uh, warm up and we're just going to use the wiggly line to create some tentacles that are whooshing through the water. I'm doing the colour. So it's up to you at this point whether you want to make it into a character or want, whether you want to leave it more um, realistic. I always love putting a character on, so I'm going to give it a little cute face. Here we go. I'm, 
And have it swimming along use, in the water there. I'm going to use this. <laughs> if you can see it, come wood yellow. And oh, then cadmium yellow, yeah. For the little tentacles oh, on no. my fingers. <laughs> Look at its That's eyes. So You've done some really sweet eyes there, Fern. So obviously, yeah, you could do whatever sort of face you want and whichever kind of eyes. Um, next one I'm going to draw is one, you know, when it's kind of... Um, moving its way through the ocean it sort of bunches itself up so then we're going to do more of a rounded mushroom sort of shape you know there's these jellyfish that you get that literally <coughs> live upside down really? like they swim upside down so you can hold them and they don't sting you if, if, if you ah, don't as long as you don't touch the top the yeah the you tentacles can hold them and they oh, don't wow. sting and it's really cool mm. Wait, I'll try we're going to add a wiggly line onto this one as well so yeah. using your wiggly lines again can i show them this? yeah which one's going to show what she's done oh there you go so you've used a different color to show the, the tentacles as well haven't you well done oh it's not got a nice smiley face as well it's a happy one so this one's going to be a bit more sleepy so we're going to give it sort of sleepier eyes i want to do that <laughs> and then we're going to get again just give it the tentacles i want to do that mommy you can do that that's absolutely fine you do have a look at um, other storybooks I think that's a really good storybook that's by Lydia fish. Monks an illustrator called Lydia Monks and um, <laughs> Julia Donaldson <laughs> about um, some sea creatures that's a really good one what's that one called sharing a shell and Tiddler as I said before so you could look through there for inspiration on how to draw oh, I love um, sharing a shell. characters that are under the sea as well okay so that's a really nice simple one that we got started with um, so obviously if you haven't got that finished now don't worry you can always come back and watch it later and, and finish and we're going to move on now to some and fish. Got these books that I like. Oh we have haven't you? That's what we were reading yesterday isn't it? Mr Greedy. And the little bit next one. You can yeah. just put them there. I'll just put them behind me so we've got space. Brilliant so we're going to move on to a fish now as well. If you haven't done the fit um if you haven't finished your jellyfish don't worry Fern Oops. okay. Broke the pencil. There's a pencil sharpener over there. Okay, so we're going to draw some fish today. So we're going to take that shape that we did originally, but we're just going to make it bigger. And that's the starting point for your fish. This one's going to be a boy okay. one. I'll show you some of the fish that I've drawn, just so you've got inspiration here. So this one is like your common goldfish. So you could colour, you could do a simple shape like this and then colour that in orange. How do you could colour it in whatever colour you wanted. That's the beauty of it, that you could have all lots of different sorts of tropical fish. So I'm going to show you how we can take this shape and make it more embellished. So what we're going to do first, we're going to add on to the tail a slightly longer tendril on its tail. Who's excited for lunch? <laughs> I don't know why Charlotte's thinking about lunch already I, I just always want food <laughs> That's the thing isn't it About being in isolation is that um, just It's just one long meal time isn't it yeah. Yeah, because school. So at this point You can start to shade If you wanted to You don't have to You can just keep it smooth <laughs> smooth shape what If you wanted oh, to we're doing, fishies. we're doing the fish yeah and we're just tidying up what the loose shape that we've done. Can I show them? We're just tidying mine. it up. Can I show them mine? Yeah, of course you can. Fern's done her other jellyfish there. That, that oh, one's a girl. Can I see your fish, Mummy? Yeah. And that one's a boy. Oh, lovely. I think I want those on a t-shirt, Fern. <laughs> right. I do. So here we go. So we've got the um, top of the fish here. And you can make this as floaty as you want. You've lost your bee pen. I'm using that one. What? It's fine, I'm using that one. Okay, and then that, what I like to do with the fin is bring it down across half of the body like that. And Now, don't worry, because you'll have a line going through there. You could either make that into part of the design I'm just having a by break. giving it lines. I'm just having a break of sharpening my pencil. Or you could just rub it out. Rub Mommy, out that line there. Mommy, so no can one you do it? No one would know it was ever there. Mummy, can you do a sketch of them? Oh, that's on that on that page for you. Oh. There you go. So everything that Fern needs is already drawn out on a sheet oh. for her. Oh. We just thought Mommy, if she didn't want to follow along at the same pace, one of the it would be easier. Really cute. 
Here we go. Actually, I'm going to do an octopus. Is this um over it? I'm going to do an octopus. <laughs> So here we go, we're going to put the face on it now. So I'm going to go for a happy face on my fish. Okay. Yeah. Nine. There you go. How's everyone finding this? Let me know in the comments. How do you draw a face on a fish? Well, I mean, you can do different, a few different ways. Because obviously a fish, if you wanted to make it look a bit more realistic, they kind of have a downwards pointing mouth like that, don't they? And they might have bigger eyes, but it doesn't quite look as friendly somehow. Mommy, it looks like this. It looks like an upside-down daddy bird. It does, yeah. Is that your octopus? Yeah. Oh, lovely. Running through the fish face. So Finn's already moved on to her octopus. Oh, thanks, Charlotte. Oh, I like that. So it's like when you make your lips lurk into that figure of eight. That's definitely a fish face. A kissing fish there we've got. Yeah, like it. Beautiful. So then you could take your um, fish... And you don't have to add any more detail on, but if you wanted to, you could. Mummy. You could add some stripes on if you wanted to. Mummy, what do you think would be better? <coughs> smile? What do you think would be better? <coughs> smile or just leave it? On your octopus? Yeah. I think he needs a smile. Well, it's or you could put some of the um, scales on as well, like this. No, <coughs> don't have Which this. we've used before is these kind of like... Imagine like a W and just join lots of W's together. Look, look at it. Oh, look at that. Brilliant. So that's the basic shape that you've just used there, that really simple shape. And as you get more confident, you might want to start developing the shape into a, a fish you might have seen. And this is a little bit like Nemo. So you could be a bit more loose with your shape and open it up a little bit. I did these last night, these ones, right? <laughs> I'm not that fast, huh? Charlotte, look at my So we thought this is like the clown fish from Finding Nemo. Oh, that's so good for her. Can I take the mat? So you can always can open I? the shape up and make can it into a different style. Right I'm, go I'm going to colour this in orange. Yeah, so Fern's gone um, on to the next one that we're doing, which is going to be the octopus, which um, I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, and then I'm doing the fish. And then you're going to do the fish. And you don't have to do them all now. You can do some now and come back to some later. That's absolutely fine as well. And we'll tell you about the little challenge we've got, but I'll do that at the end when we've done all our characters. Challenge. This one is um, an angel fish. So if you watch Finding Nemo, the angel fish is one of the big fish that's in the tank in the first one. Oh, for, Charlotte's fish. added some dots and some polka dots onto yours, haven't you, a spotty fish? So it just gives you an idea to take that as a springboard, the initial shape, and then you can add any textures and patterns on that you want. Can Any colours that you want as well. I love lunch from Layla. So do I, Layla. <coughs> break. So here we go. So this just started with a shape almost like... Um, an arrow. I quite like it because it looks like a cute little nose. So you can use different shapes. Look at the bird. Looks like she has a bird. So we'd love to see all your different types of fish that you've created for your aquarium. And if you want on another page, you can um, like can um, like draw a big tank, and then you can like put um, the and then you could cut out the the um. <laughs> The thingies, and then you could like put, pop them like over the tank. You could put, you could use them to decorate your tank. Or you? you could um just put <laughs> other bugs on that and yeah. then put the tank on. So I've these these fish look like they're having a little conversation now as well. So think about your characters. Think about how you can maybe like, make your no! um, illustrations and your characters interact with each other. What would they say to each other? We've got one up here. Doesn't look very happy. So I've used a bit more of a traditional sort of fish mouth on there for this one. I'm sure he is very happy, but just fish don't tend to look very, very cheery, do they? Yeah, so I was thinking about that this morning, actually, because in my set I have a little paintbrush, and I was wondering if anyone would like some painting sessions as well. So let me know in the comments if you would like. We have, Yeah, we have a few, don't we? It's my set. Um, yeah, if you'd like some painting sessions, I'd love to show you how I paint. Um, so let me know if you'd like that too. This fish 
looks like a fish from Mr. Bean that yeah. eats um, Mr. Bean's little fish, mm. but just without this little squiggly thing mm. on the back. Oh, and oh, bigger. Wow. Claire says, um, Hugh has made a family of fish. Oh, I'd love to see that, Claire, when he's finished. That would be absolutely fantastic. Can I read the right. comments? Um, there isn't any more at the moment, though. And Hugs Charlotte's made. showed her shaded jellyfish. Uh, the shading is so fun. It would be nice to show people a bit more how to do shading, wouldn't it, as well? Yeah. You could go on right, brilliant. So we've done our jellyfish and we've done our fish. And now we're going to move on to doing an octopus. Well, I'm doing my octopus. Fern's doing hers already. So I'm going to use the other side of the paper. We're not going to waste paper. Well, I've and we're been... going to take a circle. It's going to be the, the top of the head of the octopus. Ooh, fizzy. Okay, it's quite hard with drawing octopuses because you need to get the eight legs. And it's called octopi. The octopi. It's the octopi. Does anyone know what um, a workshop means? Is it where... A workshop? Yeah. Do you know what it means, Fernie? I think it means that you work in a shop <laughs> and you have to do, like, very much working. Do you? I can't find my work, my octopus that I did before. I'm just letting me find like, it for you. I can't find my work. <laughs> can't find my work. Workshop. I might just be hiding. Never mind. OK, so you take your circle. And then we want to make sure that we've got eight Whoa, legs. That's a perfect circle. That comes with practice, that doesn't it? So what we're going to do, we're going to put some guidelines for I've us done on. It a bit different. So one, two, I'm proud. three, I show this? four. So sort of halfway down, Can you've got four lines, and that'll give you a guide for getting each of your legs on. Because what I find when I draw Can I just show this? is that. Just one moment, Finn. When I draw, sometimes I get the legs on and then by the end I'm cramming like three legs together and it's all a bit squashed up. So this way just means I can spread it all out a bit more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah? You should have put some in that It looks a bit like a jellyfish as well. I think Fern wants to show you her octopus. A finished coloured in octopus. I couldn't um, <coughs> do um, a circle. I couldn't do a circle like this one because I found it out that I was trying to do a circle, but it came out as like a tall big bang. Yeah, but that's okay because it's still we can still tell it's an octopus, can't we? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna move on. So, so what we're gonna do there? Is we're gonna take the legs as guidelines, <laughs> but we're not gonna start the legs. You can start the legs I at the head if you want, but I like to give a little gap. Here and then make the leg. So we'll go round that. You can always draw that off um, rub that bit off afterwards. No so That's one leg. Two legs. You can be quite free flowing with this. Three legs. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. And don't worry, if you don't manage to fit all eight legs on, it doesn't matter. Nobody's counting. It doesn't have to be eight. It doesn't have to be, but I think they do have eight legs because they're called an octopus. <laughs> Am I right? I think I'm right. I'm moving on to my whale, actually. That's fine. It you might move... be a bit harder. You can move on to your whale, no problem. So there we go, you've got the the shape of the octopus here. And what I like to do is add in oh, some Oh wow. Do you want to show that looks like yeah. that looks like an anglerfish? <laughs> Very good. Wow, look at that. <laughs> is Daddy still here? He, he must still be watching because he's drawing a fish. Well done. That is so good. I like to add on the um little suckers. I think they're called suckers, aren't they? I don't know. So don't suction worry about adding pads. these. The suction pads on. You don't have to add them on. It's quite nice to do it though, where like just do a little bit peep, peeping in. The paper got stuck to my hand, but I don't know how. It's got stuck to my hand. What I love about drawing sea creatures is you can go to town on your um, detail if you want to. Because like sea creatures are all like different shapes and sizes. Oh, they're so varied, aren't they? There's like there's um. 
a massive abundance of different types if we look after our oceans and take care and reduce plastic. Well, when I, whenever you say that, Charlotte, what do I say to you? Practice. Practice. I've been practicing for a lot longer, and all it is, I've got good because I love drawing and I practice and I just draw every day because it's something I love to do. So if you really, really love it, I need to sharpen my pencil. If you really love it, just keep going, keep practicing. That's how you get better. If you don't use it, you do lose it. And I have, when I've had periods in my life where I haven't drawn, it takes a little bit of a time to get back into it. Can I show I'm just going to finish this because people are following along with it, Finn, but you can definitely show them in a minute. Is that okay? Oh, are you counting up to a minute? Does anyone else's children do that? When you say in a minute and then they start counting. They say five minutes and they count to five. So let's go for a little um, contemplative, is that the word? <laughs> a little thinking octopus today. Just thinking about the ocean. Mm. Looks very dreamy and sleepy, doesn't he? Wait a minute, because Mummy said. Yeah. You see all those eyes? Yeah. Well, they are from Art and what, what is Art for Kids Hub. You love watching that, don't you? They like and the eyes are great. They like the so there we go. I hope you've enjoyed drawing along with your octopus. Could you do sketch, please? No, oh, Kath said, well done to Toddy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. Lucy says she's got a new set of paints, so she'd like to have a painting session. Oh, lovely. Brilliant, Lucy. That's exciting. Um, no, Lucy Connors. Brilliant. Okay. Fabulous. So what we'll do... All of them are sketched out there for you, okay? Oh, you want to do a quick sketch so you can go over? Of the way. It's going to be facing the other way. Okay. There you go. Sketch it out lightly for you. With the gaps. Okay, and you can do your own face. There we go. So we've done our octopus, and we're going to move on to the whales now. So if you have a little look at here, I think drawing whales are like I'm one of my favourite things. That's You're doing a whale, aren't you? Drawing a whale is like my favourite thing to draw. I've always drawn whales. I, I just used to love drawing them, and I used to write letters to the prime minister to save the whales when I was about twelve. Did yeah, Did you I wrote to John Major. Um, I don't think I ever got a reply. But. And dolphins. So we're going to look at whales and dolphins, which are very similar in terms of their shape. We haven't got a dolphin on mine. Well, you're just going to draw the whales. Oh, yeah. I know you have on the other side. Hi. You have. So what I want you to do with your whale is we're going to focus on this shape. So we're just going to take a sweeping um, Wait, circle down like this. Oh, look at Charlotte's octopus. He's got a little moustache. <laughs> Fantastic. Do you want to move over a little bit? Move over a little bit. So with the whale, we're going to take like a sweeping shape. So if you can do a circle, it's almost like three quarters of a circle. And then we're going to add on like a, a shape that's a bit of like um, a straight line. Ah. Oh, wait, actually, it is an oblong. More, more of an oblong this Charlotte, week. Charlotte, why did you say don't say an oblong? Because she keeps. I kept she saying oblong for evil. Oblongs. Oblongs. I don't know why. How okay, it's almost that, like then? um, a speech a speech mark, you know. How do you do that? That kind of shape. So just imagine that, but made bigger. Speech mark. Mm -hmm. really good. Oh yeah got real character when you put a different style of eye on, hasn't it? And then we're going to add, we're just going to make the tail here. And the tail can be really big if you want it to be. It can be big or small. And then we're going to put, they have like really small little mouths coming along here. I'm going to leave this wide thing. Yeah. It could be like a beluga whale, what which are wide top. So that's just showing like a small version of how you could draw, how you could draw a whale. Oh, those look like eyes. Yeah, they could, they could be eyes. Those could they? be eyes, like, like. So you could draw, you could draw a tiny whale. And then we're going to add our fin um, onto it there as well. Our what? Fin, oh yeah. Yeah. So they have a little blowhole as well, don't they? 
I'm going to put that there. And I'm just going to put a little eye on there for you as well. So actually, it's quite a simple shape, but it looks really effective. And obviously, you could do um, you could do a you could have it more uh, as a straight shape if you don't want to have it curved yeah. around. It sounds a bit weird, but it has its water coming out of its hole. Oh hole. yeah. Oh. That's a bit weird. <laughs> Which way do you think it's going to be facing, Mummy? So you could have it like that as well okay. if you wanted. Which way do you think it's going to be facing? That way or that way? Um, that way. Face that side. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we move on to drawing our dolphin. So the dolphin, again, I've done it on the opposite side, so they could be having a little conversation. I've done it on the opposite way round, is that we can use the same sweeping shape again. Okay. Do dolphins have blowholes? <clears throat> yeah, they do. And obviously their faces are a little bit different, aren't they? So they have a more of a pointy, almost like beak-like shape. So I'll just let you draw that. And then we're going to come round. I mean, you'd have to have a huge aquarium to have whales and dolphins in, obviously. Like and I do whales. not like um, the idea of keeping huge animals, or really lots of animals in captivity. It's not really great, is it? Um, but I just thought I'd show you how to draw whales and dolphins because they're favourites. No, but there's <clears> this <throat> channel on YouTube if you know what YouTube is. And um, <laughs> it, it, it's... Um, inspires me sometimes to draw animals because mm. he finds animals like, like um, his his channel is called Brave Wildness. Brave Wildness. And he like finds like he finds like spiders. What was that spider called? Like the willow. Black widow. Black widow. Black widow spider. spider. Yeah. And he finds like, and he finds like a really, he finds like a fluffy spiders. And he like finds finds lots of creatures like turtles. I'm gonna add the blowhole on there and as lots well. Of stuff. He does, and that's inspired you, hasn't it, to look at different types of wildlife. So I do I do recommend going on YouTube and um, looking for anything to do with wildlife. If you're looking for inspiration for for your drawings and your illustrations, search wild um brave wild brave wildness. wildness. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> so that's our dolphin. Okay, you can make him look a bit more smiley if you want to. Oh, and yours is saying something. You can make your character say something if you want. Hey, dudes. <laughs> look at the water coming out. I love it. So I've made, just turned my, the mouth of mine up a little bit just to make it look a little bit more cheery because dolphins do tend to look quite happy, don't they? Has anyone swam with dolphins? I'd love to hear. I'd love to do that. I'm a little bit scared because they're quite big in the water. But I think it's something that I would absolutely love to do. No, they don't bite. I think they really like being in, in the water. And, you know, wild swimming. Not I wouldn't want to do it in a swimming pool. I'd rather do it in the sea. Um, yeah, let me know if anyone has. On holiday, there was this... Ah, I think Teddy, either Al or Teddy, is saying, yeah, I know him, Brave Wilderness. So he watches him too. Oh, hi, Joe. We've got somebody joining us. Hi, Joe. Don't worry if you're only just jumping on. You can always stop and watch the replay later. But come and join us from here. That's brilliant. <laughs> uh, it's so lovely to see loads of you. Thank you for being here. Um, right, well, I'm going to talk about, before we do a few more, because um, we've got we've only got a few more to draw, I'm going to talk about a challenge. Challenge. I'm going to set you a little challenge for today. Homework. It's not home Ooh. Well, it's not homework. I'm not expecting, like, you, you to send your homework in. But if you would like to develop what you've done today and have a little challenge, then... I would love for you to draw your own seascape. So what's a seascape? A seascape is a scene where you've got loads of the characters in today all incorporated into the same scene. So you could have whichever ones you like best, but you could also take some of the... Um, yeah, it could be Yeah, it could be landscape. Yeah, that would work. You could take... Um, draw a seascape. <laughs> I so dip my finger in paint that I thought was dry. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so you could take inspiration from the warm up today where you've drawn corals and little fish. You'd have tiny fish in the background. You'd have tiny um tiny sea creatures like snails. We're not finished yet. We could have bubbles. Look at this type. 
I've got and you could add in, like I'll show you what Fern's done today. She's Go done on. octopus. She's done, oh, look at that little fish. Yes. You've put the scales whale. on. A whale. Octopus. And an octopus. Sure and a boy. And my little tip here with this one is that if you've got a younger <laughs> one who's struggling, you can always draw the shape really lightly and they can draw over and it. And a boy one. So your challenge is to... Put all of the characters that you've done today into a scene, an underwater scene, I'm using. I'm just going to show a really simple. Just wait one moment. Um, using all of the um, little bits that we've um, done in the warm up as well. So, are you up for that challenge? Let us know if you are. Oh, Penny already asked if she could do that. Yes. Well, that would be lovely, Penny, if you could do that and um, send me a picture. I would absolutely love to see a picture of that. I think Charlotte wanted to show a really simple way of drawing. Yes, I'm just going to so you're having a practice. And then we're going to move on to a really <laughs> cute little creature. Well, I'm going to do my starfish right now. Just you do starfish now? Yeah, We've got all the time in the world, Fern, don't worry. It's, that's <coughs> not the best. But what you do is you like draw a line up like that. We did it in the warm up. And then you vibrate. And then you need to turn that, and then that off. You'd like draw the curve up, put another curve up. It's a bit uneven. And then you can do scales or whatever you want to. Yeah. And <coughs> yeah, it's a fish. Oh, yeah, I love how you're doing scales. Like, so they start off smaller and they get bigger and bigger. That's a really good way of making your drawing really interesting is to play with the scale of things. So your challenge, yes, is to draw a seascape if you want to. If not, just keep to the characters. That's absolutely fine. So the next thing we're going to draw... Let's it. Oh, yeah. Done it. Starfish. There's a starfish. We'll do the starfish next, okay? No. Yeah, we're going to do the starfish next. And then, and then we're going to end on that one because I think that's so cute. So for a starfish, we're going to take a really a light line. We're just going to do one line upwards and one line across, like an upside down T shape. Okay, because we're going to draw a starfish, and they have five. Um, they tend to have five legs, and it's quite hard to just draw five legs freehand without up. one kind of going off. Sorry. So we are just going to take a arrow shape. So can you see, it's almost that. like the skeleton for Eel. a starfish. And you do that really lightly so that if you want to, you can rub it out, but you don't have to. Mommy, and then we're going to sort of plump it out a bit. Mummy, are you going to drink your vitamin? Yeah, I'm going to drink my vitamin drink in a minute. <laughs> Thanks, Finn. Mummy. You're looking after me. Mummy, 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 I'm mummy, just, mummy. I'm just doing this for everybody. And then, can you see how you just go round it, give it a kind of centimetre either side and then you've got your starfish shape. Now if you wanted to you can leave the lines there it's like, um, but what I like to do is put, sorry, can you message, do you want to message your friends and ask them not to send a message right now? Um, do a little dot in the middle and then we're going to go, it's quite hard to do this, we're going to get smaller and smaller as we go down until we're just doing some dots at the end. And this gives a really good way of perspective. You don't have to put these on, but I quite like to because I think it makes it look quite realistic. Could you do a sketch of the seahorse? Yeah, we're going to do the seahorse again because people really liked that last week. And then we're going to finish on a really cute request that we had a couple of weeks ago. We'll, go, we'll do that afterwards, okay? Can I see? post a picture of it. Of course you can. Everyone go onto Facebook and, or Instagram. Yeah, you can share your pictures with me and I can put them on Instagram or you can put them on Instagram and tag me. Um, put, them fantastic. In, put them on Instagram. So there we that go, would there's your good. starfish. Brilliant. And if you wanted to, you could um, shade around it if you wanted to. There we go. Let me show what you've done. And this is Ferns. Oh, you've already shown it. Did you did you sneak it in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I'd already shown it. There we go. There's Ferns. 
Mm. Yeah. So we're going to do the seahorse again because we it. really like drawing that last piece. Just do that quickly. Um, you can show them at the end, all right? So the seahorse, we uh, we took our squiggly line last week, and then we created like a little snout. And then we used like an S, a backwards S shape to create its tummy. And then we added on a little, cute little... Teardrop. <laughs> yeah. And then we extended our squiggly line down. And then we made a squiggly line going round like this. So it's just a little recap. Now you do. A sketch of this. No, on this page. On that page, I do a quick sketch for you. Yeah. That. Let's see. That looks like that. Don't know what that says, but it's confusing. Okay. And then we can add its little snout on, the little eye. You okay. haven't done the snout on mine. And like on this picture, <laughs> I've done two. <laughs> Having a little chat with each other, maybe they're in love. So you could draw two together, and these could go in your seascape as well if you wanted to put them in. Might that. be nice to have some little small ones in the background, or you might want to have one as your main character. Yeah, I like that. Is that a seascape what you've drawn? This sort of, but you could go into more detail. You could have the ocean floor or the aquarium floor. You could have coral in the background. Okay, we're going to move on now. I'm just doing that quickly as we did that last week. So if you want to watch the part two of the cute characters, you get to see more in depth how to draw that one. We're going to draw the last thing for today, which we had a request of in a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, is the axolotl, which I didn't I didn't even know. Well, it's I had seen. I didn't know what it was. It's an, it was amphibian. an amphibian. So here we go. That's my scale of colours. Oh. Well, we're reusing paper. We're reusing paper, aren't we? We're being eco-friendly. Yeah. You can still. So it's an axolotl, and it's spelled like this. Is it? Axolotl. And it's a it's a reptile, isn't it? No, it's an amphibian. Amph I, I meant it's to not say. A reptile. <laughs> Thank goodness you're here, Charlotte. I meant to say amphibian. Honest. <laughs> so I've done it. Drawn it in two two ways here. So I drew it like this first, so cute. and I think it looks really cute. It looks like it reminds me of um, Puck Avatar. from Midsummer Night's Dream, like or, or Ariel beautiful. from The Tempest. It reminds me of a little fairy creature. Um, oh, there's lots of love hearts for this one because I think it's it's someone's favourite out there. I, because it's so cute, I've added a little love heart onto its it looks chest. Like, um, one of the characters from Avatar. It does actually, like and then aliens. I broke the shapes down to make it a little bit more easier to draw. So this is what I drew first, then this is second, and then for Fern I drew it out like this. And I think this is the one that I like the best that I'm going to show you because it's the cutest. Can you draw that Yeah, of course. On, on my I will. Um, so it's got almost like sort of, sort of fiery tendrils and then it's got like um, a tadpole tail. So if you're familiar with what a tadpole looks like, it might be quite easy to draw the tail. So I'm just going to break that down. I'm just going to leave that there for you just to have a look at whilst I just sketch it out really lightly for Fern. And could you do it the same as that? Yeah, and she's going to draw over it. Okay. I'll draw that for people here so they can see. And then I'll go over it again in detail. I want mummy. Please may you actually like sketch it out and like may you like do like the the other drawing kind. Yeah. Well, just, oh. We could do this afterwards as well if you want to go do it again. Yeah. I'm not gonna put the eyes on because you like to do your own style of eyes. So can I, can I, um, take this off the back of this piece of paper. We're can running out of paper. Can I try and left some of my Oh no, it's alright, I was just running out of the ones that I'd already used up. Oh, right. It's fine. So here we go, let's do our last one for today, which is the axolotl. So you're going to take, it's not, you can do a circle, but I'm going to take more of a um, sort of a squashed circle. An oval. <laughs> oh, hello, who's that? 
panda. A panda. Rogue panda has snuck in. We're not drawing pandas this week, Charlotte, but that is beautiful. Maybe we'll draw pandas another time. Yeah. Haven't drawn pandas yet, have we? We could do bears. So we're going to take its its head shape here and then we're going to add a really cute little body just onto the bottom. Everyone, look at this. How cute. <laughs> look at his cute face. You can go to town with the cuteness on these axolotls, I think. Axolotls so cute. So cute, isn't it, Kate? Mummy. And then we're going to add its first little... Um, the body. I don't even know the term for these, but... They're not quite ears. Antennae. Antennae, tendrils. Mummy. I would imagine they use them to feel their way through the water, don't they? Mummy, what are these on my... What is this on my hand? Is it glue? I don't know. This There's is an really cute, Really cute webbed... They're so feet. cute. Yeah, so there you get to see what it looks like. It's and then so look so at its feet. Cute. So that's what I'm drawing at the moment. Because Almost has quite human-like hands yeah. it's not a human it's not a human it's honest a bit, a bit confusing. so these tend to be red and then it's kind of a pinky color if you wanted to have a look at what sort of colors to do and we're going to go for the cutest little eyes and my favorite bit is adding this tail on that's like um let's can pass me the rubber that's like a tad tadpole tail i love the little arms just like and then its little legs will come out here. And its feet. So to do webbed, to do webbed feet, we just do like that. There we go. You could add more. If you wanted to have five fingers on, you could. That would be absolutely fine. Five Two. fingers? Here's our little axolotl. What are those? I've just shown people how to draw the webbed feet. Oh, Julie's saying maybe we could have an insect day. Yeah, that would be really good, wouldn't it? Stick insects. Stick insects, yeah. Spiders. We have to get our cousin Sarah to come and help us with that, wouldn't we? Because she's a beetle expert. Beetle um, bug expert. So if you've enjoyed today's session, then I'm going to be doing another session next week. We haven't decided exactly what we're dragons going to do yet. or princesses. Do you want to do dragons and princesses? But well, I want to do... You'll do a dragons, knights princesses kind of theme that would be good no can we just do <laughs> oh look at that it's that looks so like a kawaii sort of style isn't it you can add the tendrils on can we just do princesses then just do dragons then well, just do i could do a really short workshop of princesses possibly but it's quite nice to do lots of ones all together no because there's lots of princesses like snow white yeah um elsa Belle. Right, so there we go. We've we've finished it by doing some adding some extra little bits to the tendrils that it has around its face. Um, yes, I've lost my train of thought now because Finn was talking to me. <laughs> if you have enjoyed the sessions, um, I was going to ask, would you be able to leave a review on this page? So on my business page, it would be absolutely amazing. I'd be over the moon if you could leave a review just to say how you're finding the sessions, and um, just then people can find me. I can share those testimonials with the world and sort of grow grow the business it's like a review charlotte so um the, if you go to the review section of this page there are quite a few reviews of the artwork that i've made um but i would love to get some for the um for the workshops that would be fantastic and um, as ever i'd love to invite you to come over to draw with fee which is my group um where i do mindful drawing and i'm sharing tips and things in there and developing stuff in there this week's inspiration is uh, tea and coffee so tea and coffee cups um, and just drawing scenes and doodling scenes to do with tea and coffee because I know that that's one of the things that's really sustained me is every so often going, do you know what, I just need a cup of tea, just need a nice relax. So that's the inspiration for this I week's um, drawing. And um, Yeah, but I, I love tea, but some people might prefer to draw coffee. If you don't like tea or coffee, don't worry. There'll be other sessions that we'll do over in Draw With Fee. So come and join me over in there. I'll pop the link in the comments to that. But please, please do leave a review if you'd like to. Um, 
the other thing I wanted to say is that I, I have got a YouTube channel which I'm developing. So if you want to find me, it's Draw With Fee over on YouTube. Come and like and subscribe over there as well. And just a little reminder of the coffee link if you would like to donate um, the price of a coffee for the session. But please don't feel free to, uh, don't feel that you have to. Um, these sessions are free of charge and I love doing them and I will keep doing them for free. Um, it's just helping me to keep my business going and grow it whilst we are in these unprecedented times um, I hope you've enjoyed the session I'll be popping some pictures um, a recap of what we've done if you want to catch up and um, I love as I said before I'd love seeing your interpretations thank you ever so much to, for joining us today Fern just wants to say something and share something <laughs> if you want us to do characters of this um, mummy will search it up and we'll do um, lots of characters of, <laughs> of this brand do you want to do um, the Mr Men books ok Fern's just made an executive decision there thanks ever so much everybody and we'll see you all next week bye, bye. Go with me. bye. Go with me. <laughs> see you later bye.